Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. With the holiday season round the corner, many new Tarnished will probably be picking up Elden Ring and joining us in the Lands Between. There are also, now more than ever, many whispers of Elden Ring DLC potentially being announced imminently. Therefore, I wanted to share with you the 12 discoveries we have made that I feel are the most rare and secret, and that many players, new or old, may still not know about. Let me just first say that I won't be covering anything tied to NPC quest lines or lore, such as the War Surgeon armor set or the inverted Karian statue and countless other items. Though these are rare, and there are many rare discoveries and items tied behind the quests, the NPCs and the lore, they have already been covered time and time again, and therefore they aren't secret anymore. I'm really hoping that at least one thing on this list is new information to you, even if you are an Elden Ring veteran. So, as I say, I'm leaving out most NPCs and lore as that has been done to death. Please let me know how you did in the comments. Did you already know all of these things? Or has this video opened your eyes to even more secrets in the lands between? In no particular order, we'll kick off the list here in Kaelid. More specifically, in Celia, the town of sorcery. The only reason we're here is simply to light the three fires and grant us access beyond the town. So go around the town lighting the three fires that you see here and then meet me out the back. Now traverse up these cliffs, avoiding the giant balls of death that come rolling at you as you progress. And when you get to the top, where you see Millicent at the church, head directly north. Before long, you'll see this spirit spring. This will allow you to jump on top of this giant skull. And up here are some very late game smithing materials. Smithing stones 7 and 8 can be in very short supply. And having such quick and easy access to a smithing stone 8 two sevens and a stone sword key is absolutely fantastic. The items themselves that you can gather from this discovery aren't too amazing. Yeah, they're just smithing stones. We've seen them a million times. But how easily accessible yet missable they are really intrigued me and I thought this was an amazing part of the game to include in this list. And also, as we move into the second one, please let me know what do you think are the rarest secrets in this game that people may still, even after all this time, not know about? As we're here, we may as well also visit the Celia hideaway. So start heading back to the church, and when you get to the gravesite, you'll be confronted with this battle mage enemy. Take him out, and then pretty much directly north on the other side of the large gravestone, you can hit this invisible wall and you'll be in the Celia hideaway. Now, as I say, at this point, this is not secret. It's needed as part of Selen's questline. That is not the reason I'm including this in this list. There are two very rare pieces of loot in here that are still missable even when you know about this cave. So let's go in. Now that we're here, this cave can be quite confusing, so I'm going to leave in the run until we get to the second part of the Crystal Cave, which is where we need to be. And to fill the time as we're getting there, so I can leave all this footage in for you. Firstly, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here, and for choosing me to be your entertainment for these next few minutes, and for watching this video. I hope you're enjoying it, and it's truly appreciated. If you want to see more, we do crazy runs on Twitch all the time, and it truly has been a dream come true being able to do this full-time and bring you nearly daily videos for the past year. Honestly, I am truly happy when I am entertaining and helping other people. So being able to sink every waking hour into this and entertain you and make you laugh and make you smile and help you learn and educate at the same time is genuinely my biggest passion in life and I am so grateful and thankful, truly. And if you would like to show your thanks and your support, for anyone that didn't know, YouTube actually implemented a super thanks feature which is a fantastic way of supporting your favourite creators and helping them to continue doing this. I am insanely active with comments and will personally thank each and every person that does choose to be absolutely awesome and go that one step beyond and support the channel in such a way, be it through a super thanks, a membership or Patreon or whatever it may be. Anyway, rant over, I just wanted to thank you personally and also use this minute to help spread awareness of how you can support the channel. That has given me time to get into the second chamber of the Celia hideaway and over in the right hand corner here you can smash this illusionary wall and in this chest you can get the crystal spear. 
We're not done quite yet though. Retrace your steps just a little bit, and then you can jump over onto this second crystal and head towards the southwest. Drop down this hole and take out the sorcerers, and you'll be rewarded with the Crystallian Ashes, which I think could well be the most missed spirit ashes in the game. And next up, we're going to go right to the northeast of Kaelid and round the back of the building where you meet Garank, the beast clergyman. Head out of Garank's building, turn right and go round the back. Once you get to this spot at the cliff edge, I'll just bring it up on the map for you now. You can very carefully drop down onto the tree branch. Drop down once more onto the branch below and then again to the roof of the building below that. Now you want to use the jutty outy ledges. That's the uh, that's the technical term for it, by the way, the jutty outy ledges. <laughs> and you want to traverse down two more levels. Be careful of the bats around. If you're here at a very low level, they are pretty strong. And when you get right to the bottom, keep heading north, and eventually you'll come across this dagger, which I believe is pronounced the Sincada. This is one of the most secret secrets in the game, I believe, personally. I did not know about this for so long. And it's very powerful and very unique in that it raises the potency of bestial incantations. So if you do like to use all the spells that Garank gives you for delivering him that death root, this is the dagger for you. The dagger itself unfortunately doesn't scale with faith and it can't be infused so you can't change that. But nonetheless, it gives you a 10% damage buff for your bestial incantations, and this effect will stack and multiply with the claw mark seal. Also, fun fact, Sincada comes from the name of an Italian short sword, and the name literally translates to five fingers. In real life, that is referencing the width of the blade. However, they have perfectly translated that to Elden Ring, and as it says, the design celebrates a beast's five fingers, symbolic of the intelligence once granted upon their kind. I love that so much. Now we will finally move out of Kaelid for this next one. I didn't realize until after I'd finished gathering these how many of them were in Kaelid. But now we are off to the Rea Lucaria Academy. This is a very simple one. Once you have access to the academy and you go through this first door, you will obviously be faced with a sorcerer at the end of the room. And as you charge over to them, a few marionettes will drop and start attacking you as well. Once they've all been dealt with, come back to the start of the room and facing inwards, this room will be on your right hand side. There is another illusionary wall here. There isn't much in it. You can just grab a rune arc, but this is so unsuspecting. It's so surprisingly well hidden. You would not believe the amount of people that had no idea of this wall's existence when I first posted it in the Things You Missed series. So I thought it really deserved to be highlighted here. There are many rare finds in the Rea Lucaria Academy. A couple that I considered sharing were one or two of the harder to obtain glintstone masks or the Radigan icon, and admittedly they are cooler than just another rune arc, but I feel like they're nowhere near as hidden as this. I think a lot more people know the location of Radigan's icon than this sneaky little rune arc, so for that it had to go on this list. And guess where we're going next? Back to Kaelid! There are so many hidden secrets in Kaelid, it's amazing! This is the one and only time I will be talking about the lore and an NPC briefly. I felt that this piece of knowledge had to be shared with you. And it's become a meme over on Twitch because I reference this piece of information every single time his name comes up. I am talking about Radan and more specifically his horse, Leonard. I need to get this out there for anyone who still might not know. So please let me know if there's any one person watching this right now who didn't know what I'm about to tell you, my job here is done. The rest of the video doesn't matter if I have educated one person with this bit of information. As you can see from the item description of the Remembrance of the Star Scourge, once you have beaten General Radan, the Red Lion General wielded gravitation powers which he learned in Celia during his younger days, all so he would never have to abandon his beloved but scrawny steed. That is right, Star Scourge Radan, the most powerful of all the gods, an absolute killing machine corrupted by the rot, literally learned to master a whole school of magic just so he wouldn't accidentally hurt his horse under his massive weight. Is that not just the most touching bit of lore that's ever been put in a video game ever? It is so heartbreakingly beautiful that I couldn't not include it on this list. 10 out of 10 Radan, you are the true Giga Chad. And because of this information, I am heartbroken 
broken every time I come back to this fight. The fact that it's even referenced multiple times that he has gone so mad he will kill and eat friend and foe alike, yet he has not even for a second ever considered hurting Leonard. His love for that horse is more powerful than the Scarlet Rot. That is just so incredible. And as we're already here, that will transition me very smoothly into the next one as we go directly to the very northern corner of his arena and I introduce you to a hidden cave. This one, very simple. For anyone that didn't know, this is the only cave in the game that is actually inside of a boss arena. Go directly north and right at the end of this boss arena, just by the beach, is the War Dead Catacombs. This is an incredibly difficult and extremely late game dungeon not to be trifled with. And another fun fact for you, it used to be an incredibly powerful rune farm when enemies used to deal 100% damage to each other. You could sit here and just AFK and they would all fight each other and you would get tens of thousands of runes. It was insane. However, enemies only do something pathetic like 5 or 10% damage to each other now and they also won't even start to hurt each other until you have engaged engaged in combat and aggroed them at least once so this afk farm along with pretty much all others is completely gone but i thought i'd share that with you whilst we were here still a very awesome cave though a very difficult one we will now leave caleb once more and head towards the mountain tops of the giants for this next one, progress through the mountaintops of the giants as you usually would until you get here with the massive makeshift bridge and all the fire monks and the fire prelate. Head right and double back on yourself underneath this mountain and you can enter into the giant's mountaintop catacombs. We are here for an incredibly hard to reach spirit ash. Just keep going through the dungeon as normal until you get to this first lift. Go down with it and then once you get here, send it back up and wait. Now you can step on this platform and it will take you down into the depths. Down here are two incredibly powerful watchdog enemies. I'm just going to avoid the first one because with the magic splash damage he deals it is ridiculous. Next up you'll have to face two of the frost trap statues and when you finally manage to make it past both of them you will be faced with another watchdog. However this one is nowhere near as powerful as the other one. Behind this watchdog you can open up the chest and you'll be rewarded with the fire monk ashes. I personally feel this may be the most secret spirit ashes in the game because you need to take a hidden lift and then fight your way through many traps and powerful enemies. And after all that effort, I have never even used them. Does anyone here have any thoughts and opinions on the fire monk ashes? Are they worth using? And now that we're done here, I'm going to meet you in the Celia Crystal Tunnel back in Kaelid. Though this next one isn't tied to a specific area, it's more of a hidden mechanic that some people may not know about. You can access the Celia Crystal Tunnel from the Aeonian Swamp in Kaelid. It is right at the north of the swamp, just here. And the reason we're here is because once we climb up this ladder and enter into this room, there is a ton of cracked crystals that you can loot. I believe in this room alone, there are a total of 20. There are definitely easier tunnels to farm these crystals in, but this one has them in the greatest quantities as far as I'm aware. Another great way to get these crystals, which requires some money but is unlimited, is when you get the Somber Stone Miner's Bell Bearing by defeating the Duo Crystallion boss at the end of the Altus Tunnel Dungeon. Now, why are we gathering all these crystals? Well, I'm glad you asked. With enough attacks, they will cause certain enemies to go into a frenzied state and become hostile to other enemies and they will then start attacking each other instead of you. The three enemies you can use these on are imps and burial watchdogs, which I believe most people are familiar with by now, but also, just in case you weren't aware, stone golems. Imps only require one or two crystal darts, whereas watchdogs and golems require around seven to ten, depending on how much damage you're dealing and how high level they are. But as you can see here, once I've inflicted him with enough darts, there is a visual and audio cue that I have now inflicted him with frenzy and they're gonna start fighting each other leaving me free to do whatever i want this is particularly helpful in dungeons and caves where you can get the imps to turn on the watchdogs and vice versa which ironically would have made the previous tip so much easier for me as i say once you have the somber stone miners bell bearing too you can buy these in 
endless supply, making certain incredibly difficult areas of this game much more manageable. Now we'll go back to Kaled, and I will show you an additional incredibly broken step to an already overpowered rune farm. I'm sure 99% of people know by now, if you would like a few quick levels early game, you can get yourself here to Fort Faroth in Kaled and just wail on this dragon from the rear with a bleed weapon, and you'll be able to bank yourself up to 100,000 runes if you're also using the gold pickled foulfoot. However, did you also know, when she dies, if you sprint back to the site of grace on torrent, you will have enough time to rest up and cancel the death animation. You won't get the full amount of runes because it won't also grant you the runes from her five babies, but as you can see here, even without using the gold pickled foulfoot or the gold scarab, I still earned 50,000 runes, and now I can repeat and recycle this as many times as I want. If I'm also using extra rune buffs, I could get upwards of 70,000 runes per clear. And if you are struggling with the early game, you can easily get here and farm this dragon to get yourself to around level 40 or 50 very quickly and easily. And then you'll be able to deal with Limgrave and Stormvale much more manageably. Next up, I will meet you back in the mountaintops of the Giants, more specifically at Castle Sol. I've just defeated Commander Nile, but that's not why we're here. Let's head up these stairs and up this lift and grab ourselves the Halig Tree Secret Medallion left half because we will need both halves so that we can access the hidden path to the Halig Tree, as the next part of this video will encompass quite a few things, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. Now that we've grabbed that, I meet you here at the village of the Albanorix, and if we head southeast, we can roll into this pot and reveal that it's just little old Albus. By speaking to him, he will grant you with the other half of the Halig Tree secret medallion. Now, if you speak to Albus early on in the game, there is an additional part to this quest. You'll be able to take the medallion down to the south of Liania, around here. You can progress through a cave and present this to Latena. That will trigger her questline, and you'll also get her as a spirit ash. As I say, NPC questlines aren't the purpose of this video, so we'll ignore that side section and go back to the main reason that we just collected the medallion. Let's teleport to the Grand Lift of Rold and use the secret medallion to transport us to the hidden path to the Halig Tree. As we progress through here, dodging all of the vulgar militia, we can drop down off the side of this broken balcony and onto an invisible bridge. Our first rare find, and one of the most most important in the game is behind this illusionary wall where we can acquire the silver scarab which will drastically increase our item discovery but more importantly once you have blitzed through the rest of the hidden path you will eventually come out and find yourself in the consecrated snowfields and the consecrated snowfields themselves are number 10 in this video as you can see the majority of the area is just white nothingness there is a reason that this is the only area in the entirety of My Things You Missed series that had four parts. No area in the game has more missable stuff and is harder and more confusing to navigate than the Consecrated Snowfields, making it full of rare discoveries and secrets. For that reason, this entire area had to make its way onto this list. Now we'll head back to Kaled for number 11. You meet me here kind of in the centre, though it's much more easily accessible from the north. And you'll see if we jump over to the other side of this ledge and head south just ever so slightly, we can traverse along this tree branch and gain access to the abandoned cave. This cave has gained a lot of popularity purely because of the item that the boss at the end of the cave drops. But without that, if you haven't specifically been googling the gold scarab, this is a very missable cave. It's in such a random location and you need to traverse across a fairly unsuspecting tree branch just to get here. There is no other way here. So for that reason, I felt this was secret enough to make it into this top 12 list. And when you're in the cave, oh boy, a lot of people do try and come here early to get that golden scarab as soon as possible. And I'll leave some of the footage in so that you can see how easy the boss fight can be. But as for the rest of the cave, it is full of awfully annoying enemies and covered in pools of scarlet rot. 
So unless you come here with lots of ways to reduce that Scarlet Rot buildup and ideally remove it completely, such as using the Flame Cleanse Me spell or having lots of soap, then you're going to have a very tough time. But you can grab the incredibly powerful Arcane Scaling Serpent Bow, which also enhances the strength of Poison Arrows. And as I say, more importantly, when you get to the end, you can wipe the floor with these Clean Rot Knights and grab yourself the Golden Scarab. An amazing reward for a very challenging and very hidden cave, well worth your time. And now for the 12th and final thing on this list of the rarest discoveries and secrets in Elden Ring is this weird ass fucking torrent bug. Look, he's just stood there. I, I dismounted and he didn't go. Has anyone, why has this happened? What the fuck? Anyway, I get back on and he sure enough starts to work again. But then I dismount. He kind of disappears in a weird way. I've never seen him disappear before. And now he won't come back. He's left me. He hates me. <laughs> He's just gone. What a random ass bug. FromSoft have fixed some incredibly major and minor bugs in this game. They've done a fantastic job. This game runs pretty damn clean. I don't recall the last time I played a game that had so few bugs. But what is this? What is <laughs> what is happening? Anyway, as I fall to the floor, dejected that my friend Torrent has left me, all that is left for me to say <laughs> is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.